In this video, we're going to talk about all the different places where you can buy vintage toys and action figures. What's up guys, Matt back again from Nerdzoic.com with another video for you. If you're new here, welcome to Nerdzoic! This channel is all about vintage... No, it's really not. It's not about vintage. It's about all action figures, games, comic books, cosplay, you name it. It's nerdy, we cover it. We put up new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you have, just sit back and enjoy. So today's video is all about where to buy vintage toys and action figures. So it's not like you can just walk into a Walmart or a Target and say, hey look, it's an 87 G.I. Joe! Or be like, oh good, there's that 88 Turtles 10 back I was looking for. It'd be kind of cool, but that's just not how it works. Vintage toys and action figures, you gotta find them at different spots, and some places are way overpriced, and honestly, for a new toy collector, it can be kind of overwhelming to figure out where they can find this stuff. Lucky for you, it's Nerdzoic Day, and I have nine places where you can go to find vintage toys and action figures. Be sure to stick around till the end. As a bonus, I'm gonna talk about my method that I use to find the best possible deals at conventions. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stick around. Just realize my fingers are below camera level there. Stick around! All right, enough of that. Let's get into this list. Okay, so the number one place to go to find vintage toys and action figures is kind of obvious, but conventions, toy conventions, comic convention, pop culture conventions, you name it. They have all sorts of old toys and action figures. Loose, mid on card, complete, not complete. It's like a plethora of nerdiness. I love going to conventions. There are conventions way more often than you'd think. It's not just like once or twice a year that your regional Comic Con holds something. You can probably, if you're willing to drive, find something once or twice every month. I keep a running calendar going of when stuff's gonna happen around me so that whenever the, uh, the nerd itch hits, I'm able to go get my toy fix at one of these conventions. It's important to note that a lot of the dealers at conventions they're expecting newbies to be there, and they're going to prey on you like wolves going after baby collectors. It's a bad analogy, forget it. But they are going to feed on you. They're going to be like, oh, look at that. That's a mark right there. Let's go after that guy. The number two place I have for you to go to find your vintage toys, specialty stores. So this is kind of like a catch-all, right? So like comic book stores, they do have collectible toy stores, which are really fun if you have one near you. Antique stores are another great place. Any of those type of old-timey places, you're going to be able to go in and find some vintage toys. You're going to play... play? No, you're not going to play with toys. You're going to pay full price for those toys because the people selling them, they know what they're worth. They're professionals. If you ever watch like the toy dealer guy, he used to have a show on... I don't know, A&E, history, who the hell knows. But he had a show and he would go around and he was basically like American Pickers. He'd go to people's houses, be like, oh, yeah, that He-Man Eternia castle's worthless. I'll take it off your hands for 20 bucks. And then he'd go and flip it for like, I don't know, 2,000 or some craziness. But yeah, that's the type of people you deal with who run these shops. So expect to be paying market price or above. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't shop at them. Just make sure that you're a savvy negotiator. One of the cool things about specialty shops is that you can get stuff either brick and mortar, go to these stores, or there's a lot of online stores where you can buy this stuff too. You just got to keep your eyes open. Collectible stores are awesome though. It's one of my favorite things to do when I have to travel to a new city is take a look and see if they have any there. Number three is an obvious one. It's eBay. Yeah, everybody knows eBay. It's been around since the 90s, so it's basically ancient. eBay's great, but again, you're gonna pay full price. Finding deals on eBay is pretty hard unless you're piecing together a collection literally piece by piece. Like, hey, I got an arm of that uh, Leonardo. Oh, no, I got his left leg. That's about the only way you're gonna get a deal on eBay, unless you buy big lots. But once you pay for shipping and the buyer's gonna have to pay all the, the uh, eBay fees, you're paying market price on eBay. But you can find pretty much anything you want and you can set alerts so that when something really rare goes up, you'll get an alert. Hey, this is available. So you can watch that auction like a hawk and just stalk it till the very end if there's not a buy it now available. Number four is a surprising one, but Etsy. You'd be surprised at the amount of action figures you can find on Etsy. Now, there's not a ton of them, and I don't even understand why they're there, but there are action figures for sale that are old, vintage, collectible action figures on Etsy. It's odd, but check it out. That's number four. 
Number five is kind of depressing, guys. Estate sales. Yeah, you know, like when someone dies and they're trying to liquidate the estate. Yeah, they're not fun, but this is where you find diamonds in the rough. This is like where they go into the drywall and they find a set of Migos or something crazy and then they got to get rid of them and you can end up getting some pretty good deals at these estate sales. The more savvy ones send all their stuff to auction houses to get auctioned off, but you can, if you keep an eye, I mean, it, in the old days it used to be the newspaper, but if you see uh, any signs for an estate sale, check it out, see what they have. You might be pleasantly surprised at what you find there and the price you could pay for stuff. Number six is probably my favorite place to find vintage toys, and that's yard sales. Because the people selling them have no idea what they're selling. They think they're selling G.I. Joe and He-Man toys that were in their attic for the last 30 years, and they're just happy to be like, oh yeah, I'll give you the lot of them for a quarter. All right, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but you can do really well at yard sales because people don't know what they have. You need to be patient though, because a lot of the times, if you're trying to put a set together or something, like let's say you're trying to put together something obscure, like the uh, old Food Fighters toys. Yeah, how's that for a blast from the past? You're gonna probably have to go to quite a few yard sales to collect all of them, or to even get any sort of a functional set together. Number seven, flea markets. If you're in a part of the country that still has flea markets, you can find some stuff there. Now you're not gonna be able to do as well at flea markets as you can at yard sales or estate sales because most of the people who are selling stuff at these flea markets, and they're usually dealers, they know what they're selling, but you occasionally get the people who just rent a table as opposed to having a yard sale. So same principles apply, you go, you could probably do pretty well. It depends though. If you don't, if you find someone who's educated on what they have, you're paying full price or even worse, if you find someone who's not educated on what they have, but they think they have something that's way more valuable than it is. And they'll be like, this is a 1995 Power of the Forest Darth Vader. I'll let you take it off my hands for $300. It's selling on eBay for like seven bucks. But yeah, that's what you're dealing with. But I digress. So it's kind of like, which are you going to get? Are you going to get the guy who wants you to pay way more than it's worth because he thinks he's got a gold mine? Or the one who just says, please just take it away. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Number eight. This is another one of my favorites. Facebook Marketplace. You'll be presently, pleasantly, presently, pleasantly surprised at some of the stuff you find on there and some of the bargains you can find. People are more willing to ship on Marketplace than they were in years past. So you can find stuff from around the country or you can meet up. Just do it in a public place. You don't want to end up meeting like the Craigslist killer, even though Craigslist is kind of dead, I think, right? Is Craigslist, is Craigslist dead? Apparently it's still alive, but it's on life support. Number nine. I feel like I've said this is my favorite place to buy like five times, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna do it again. My favorite place to buy, thrift stores. Thrift stores are great because again, you have people who are minimum wage employees just trying to make a living, but they're not experts in antique toys. So you can probably do pretty well. These guys are getting stuff in, they're pricing it to the best of their knowledge, and a lot of the times they price it wrong. You can get some pieces and uh, little bits here and there. You're not gonna go in there and find a USS flag for $20, but you might go in there and you might find like an assorted bin of GI Joes and you're able to find enough pieces to piece together for four bucks to finish a set you've been working on or to give you enough guys to sit on top of your USS flag and maybe mop the deck or whatever seamen do, I don't know. So those are my nine places to buy vintage toys and action figures. Nine. We're brought to you by the letter nine. The number nine. That sounded German. I promised you a bonus, so a bonus you will have. All right, so for the bonus, I told you I would tell you my secret method of getting the best deals at toy conventions. To be honest, it's not exactly super sophisticated or genius, but it's worked for me pretty well. So here's the deal. I told you that you can find all sorts of things at these conventions, but the guys know what they have, so they're worth money. So really, it's on you to figure out who's selling stuff below market value. That's kind of hard to do when you're faced with 80 tables and a quarter mile convention floor that you have to peruse through. So you need to be able to spot things quick, like this. Can't snap my fingers, can't snap, can't snap, that's okay. So what I do is I make sure that I'm pretty up to date on market prices for a couple of things that are 
widely sold. So for me, I'm pretty up to date on the WWE Elite figures. I'm pretty up to date on all Star Wars three and three quarter inch from the Power of the Force two forward. Got a pretty good idea where they sell. And I got a pretty good idea where Star Wars Black Series sell. So between the three of them, I'm able to spot if someone's under market price. If I'm walking and I say, oh, wow, that guy's selling a Gamorrean guard for $25. That thing retailed for 30 and it's going 35 to 45 on eBay. Guess what? I just found a dealer, all right? When you identify a dealer who's got one thing priced below market, 75% of the time, he's got a lot of other stuff. Do not walk away. Stay there, buy now. Don't pull the, I'm gonna go peruse the rest of the convention, see what else there is. Don't do that. Because somebody else, most likely me, is going to go and find and buy all the stuff at discount before you come back. It used to happen to me when I was a noob. The bottom line, people with stuff priced to sell, they sell it quick. So you gotta be quick. And the best way to do it is to buy things in bulk. So if you see like five things you like, don't like, yeah, maybe you'll get this one, maybe. No, don't wimp around. Be like, listen, bro, those five things, I want them. If someone's below market price, don't offend them by asking for a bigger discount. Just say, hey, I'm interested in these five things. What does that come to? For me, four out of five times, they're gonna tell me whatever it comes to, but at least 20% of the time, they say, ah, oh, if you get them all together, I'll give it to you for this. All right, 20% might even be a low estimate, probably half the time. If they have to round down a dollar because they don't feel like getting two, four ones out of their pocket, they'll do it. That reminds me, when you go to conventions, always pay in cash because they don't have to pay merchant fees then. If you use a credit card, they do have to pay merchant fees and it's going to drive the price up. Guys who are doing a strictly cash business usually sell lower. And remember, do not make the mistake of saying, oh, that guy has some really good prices. I'll come back to him later. Don't do it. <laughs> Buy when you see the good stuff. Don't walk away. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel here. Tuesday, Thursday, new videos teaching you how to be a nerd, get your nerd on, all that nerd stuff. Anyway, guys, till our next video, stay nerdy.